thank you uh, for coming despite the circumstances and um, uh, thanks everyone for uh, who's online for tuning in in this session i'll go a little bit into uh, more details of our latest software product called uh, transaction security broker which is um, an approval workflow engine for smart key attributes for those who might not be uh, familiar or might not remember what smart key attributes are we're going to do a little bit of re recap on that then I'll go uh, into details of um, the, the motivation and the design of the TSB, um, show you data flow of uh, some basic operations, um, architecture on a high level, and uh, I'll show you a demo how it works in action. Smart key attributes. Um, they are our uh, multi-authorization solution for operations with um, uh, HSM keys. Um, so uh, to, to achieve this, they allow you to set um, approval quorums, um, like two out of five and some combinations. We're, we're going to go into de details of that. Uh, time restrictions like time locks and timeouts. Um, and uh, they are enforced and protected by the same key store as the HSM keys uh, themselves. Um, some use cases for this type of multi-authorization uh, capabilities. Um, crypto asset protection being fairly obvious, um, where we believe it is superior um, to multi-sig or multi-party computation. We can go into details of that uh, uh, in the debate if you're interested. Um, fintech transaction approvals uh, for, for example, large transfers or trades. Um, ADAS compliant corporate signatures uh, where you can uh, require a quorum of directors, uh, corporate registered directors uh, to meet to, to sign off on a, on a, a company document or, or a process. Um, and uh, to protect operations with uh, root key. Um, so we can prevent uh, misuse of the root key by, for example, requiring um, CSO, CISO approval um, for, for any root key operation. Um, this is um, an example of how uh, that could look like in, uh, for example, crypto asset uh, use case. Uh, so let's say we have uh, two keys um, one with um, um, a restriction or, or a quorum uh, of two out of five financial officers required to approve um, of a transaction with such key, and then another key with much stricter um, requirements uh, or rules, um, the same two out of five financial officers, but in, but in addition, one out of three board members and there's a four hour time lock um, required to expire or to pass before a transaction or operation with that key is approved. So now when you have these two with, with two different levels of, of, of um, security requirements, um, you can load um, say less than 50 Bitcoins to one and more than 50 to the other, and then you will have adequate protection to, to um, these two different uh, amounts. Um, so how this looks like um, architecturally, um, at the core, so, so you have the, the policy uh, attached to a signature key on a one-to-one -one basis, um, and at the core of the policy uh, are a group of approval public keys um, with a defined quorum. You can set or define multiple of these groups with end logical relationship, um, and they are uh, grouped in a, in a token with, in which you can set uh, the time restrictions like time lock and timeouts. And then you can combine these tokens with or logical relationship. Um, so this gives you a really, really good flexibility um, and fine grained control um, over, over, you know, to meet even the most strict or, or complex policies of um, any uh, sort of organization. Um, this, all of these, these tokens are um, uh, together form uh, what we call a rule. Um, and these rules, you can set uh, different ones for uh, different actions with the key. And that is to um, use the key, uh, to block the key, to unblock it, uh, and to modify all of these policies. Um, so then, uh, then typically you would have a fairly strict rule for using a key, which might mean um, signature or, or decryption. 
um, fairly loose uh, or easy rule for um, blocking the key. Um, so, for example, if just one uh, of you know of the group or or some system detects something going wrong, uh, then they can immediately uh, block the key by themselves. Um, uh, quite strict rule for unblocking the key. Um, if you know, for example, you you um, investigate, everything is fine, or you take some precautions, and then you allow for the key to be unblocked, and only then you perform the the operation. And finally, uh, um, the most strict uh, rule for modifying all of these policies, uh, because then obviously modification becomes um, kind of the single point of attack. As I mentioned, uh, these policies are stored in the same key store as uh, the signature key uh, itself uh, within the HSM. Um, smart key attributes can be connected to um, via uh, JC provider. Uh, which until recently you would typically embed uh, in your or in your business application. Um, then the business application is required because the HSM is stateless uh, and the SKAs are stateless. The HSM is required to maintain the state of the approvals um, and to integrate with the approval clients, which presumably are not necessarily written in Java. Um, um, so all of this, you know, creates certain limitations that we were we were aware of. Um, you you need to have a Java application. You need to um, manage the state, um, and it, and you need to integrate the approval clients uh, yourself. Um, so with these in mind, we created Transaction Security Broker, which in a nutshell is a combination of um, SKA integration, um, approval workflow engine and a RESTful API. So how does this look like? Um, we have uh, the HSM with the, with the smart key attributes here on the left, um, business application and the approval client, uh, mobile or desktop uh, on the right, and the transaction security broker comes into the middle. It integrates with uh, smart key attributes, so it um, it, it embeds uh, in internally uh, the, the JC provider that you would otherwise have to uh, call yourself. Um, it um, exposes uh, the smart key attributes capabilities via REST API. It stores its internal state in in an externally connected uh, data store. That is the state of the of the approvals and and requests and and the workflow and even the results. Um, and um, and then the REST API makes it possible for for any client, regardless of uh, of the language that they use, uh, to connect. Obviously, um, the policy definition and all the integration. Well, we're, I'm going to show you that in the next few slides is happening within the transaction security broker, but the the policy storage and enforcement still remains within the HSM. So that means that uh, TSB doesn't become um, security critical, uh, even though it's a software comp component. Um, so it can be deployed in a in cloud uh, environment, and we uh, even offer it uh, as part of our um, cloud HSM offering. Um, at the same time, uh, the verification of the policies uh, is also happening um, uh, with uh, within the the smart key attributes. So at any time, all 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 the uh, the requests and approvals um, are signed uh, by uh, HSM's own attestation key. Um, so then uh, you can verify uh, consistency of uh, this workflow at any time, either directly through TSB or independently. So data flows. Um, we'll, I'll show you two examples. Uh, we'll start with creating a key. Um, so we have the, the TSB uh, here uh, with its workflow engine and state data store. Um, we have the approval client for purposes of this example only one and the business application. Um, the assumption is that the approval client generates its own um, uh, or somehow um, gets the approval private key and provides a, a, a respective public key to the business application. Um, and we have the HSM uh, down here. So. The business application uh, will start by sending a request to create a key to the workflow engine um, with uh, the key label, which will then be used to reference the key with um, some basic attributes, like whether it's exportable or, or uh, whether it's a Bitcoin key and so on, and then the policy itself with uh, the approval public keys. 
um, the, the workflow engine or the, the TSB then sends a request to uh, the HSM where it translates these uh, attributes and policies uh, for the HSM. Um, where the key is created um, after which the TSB uh, retrieves signed key attributes and returns them back to the business application. And all of this is synchronous. All of this happens uh, uh, within uh, one call. Now that we have the key created, we can use it to sign uh, operations uh, with it. Um, so the first call is to, um, uh, for the business application to request, to send, send a request uh, for a signature using the key label that it originally uh, defined and uh, a payload. Um, now, if there are no time restrictions in the request, the, the TSB can immediately um, just create the, the request internally, store it and send um, a request ID back to the business application. Um, this is because the TSB has all the information it needs um, to start collecting the approvals and to, to manage the, the workflow of this, of this request. If, however, there are time restrictions in the keys policy, um, and then, then uh, the TSB needs to send uh, a request for signed timestamp to the HSM, because then the HSM will use this signed timestamp, um, which is signed with its own internal uh, timestamp key, uh, to compare um, whether, once the final approval uh, has been sent, uh, to compare whether these time restrictions uh, uh, have been met, uh, whether you know, there, there's a time log that, that expired or whether uh, the request hasn't timed out. Um, so then the HSM returns the timestamp with the original payload uh, and uh, signed, I mean, payload signature, um, and the TSB sends the request ID back to the business application. All right, um, so now the, the approval client is ready to fetch its uh, respective uh, approval tasks. Uh, it uses its public key to identify itself um, and it sends a current timestamp and a signature. It receives uh, the approval task details back and in the next step um, uh, it, can, uh, it can now sign the approval tasks with its own internal um, private key um, and uh, return the approved uh, task back with, with the original approval and, and the signature. Um, so at this point, the TSB uh, has collected all, in this case only one, uh, necessary approval and it will automatically reach out to the HSM and retrieve um, the approved requests and store the results internally uh, for them to be retrieved by uh, the business application or, on, or even the client uh, later. At this point, the business application can, um, can reach out for the status by the original request ID and it will receive um, uh, the confirmation that the request has been executed and the signature. It can actually reach out for the status even before that, uh, but it would just receive status pending and uh, no, no signature. A little bit on the architecture, um, the, so the TSB is built um, as a Docker container with uh, JVM uh, running in it um, so with, the, with the Spring Framework and the Workflow Engine which, which is built on the, on the Spring fra Framework. JC is built into the Workflow Engine and connected to the HSM. Um, Configuration, including, for example, network settings of uh, or connection settings uh, about the HSM, uh, is provided by config file uh, to the environment configuration. Um, log is made available uh, via syslog, um, and uh, JDBC is used to connect to the state, DB, uh, state database or state storage, and of course REST API um, makes it possible for for the clients and business application to connect. Um, speaking of which, you can uh, restrict um, connections from the clients by uh, providing their um, certificates, authentication certificates, uh, to the environmental um, configuration. All right, demo time. Um, so, uh, this is our demo setup. 
Um, here um, in this big window, uh, this is a simulation of the business application. It is, by the way, uh, showing uh, some basic uh, cryptocurrency uh, use case. So we have a uh, business application uh, simulator here and two uh, approval clients, one which pretends to be desktop and one mobile. Um, and we have some old requests here, which I didn't delete. Um, all right, so we, um, we start by raising uh, a request. Uh, we'll show a no time lock request. Uh, so you can see we have two out of five. Um, we have five uh, approval keys here. Um, three are kind of a dummy and two are represented by these uh, these keys and no time lock will generate a random destination Bitcoin address set two bitcoins and send. All right, so at this point, um, so we can see the request details here, source address, destination address, some amount, uh, um, status is pending, uh, valid for nine minutes. I can show you the original API call. Um, Here's a uh, just a payload. Um, here's the name of uh, of the so this is unique name of the of the signature key. Some metadata that you can use to communicate with your clients with, and of course because this is Bitcoin transaction, uh, SHA two five six algorithm. Um, all right. Um, so the 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 clients have now fetched uh, their tasks. Uh, so you can see uh, the request has been creating created here. Um, the uh, and stored in uh, in the TSB and the approval tasks uh, have been made uh, available uh, via REST API. So the clients fetched their tasks and now they're available to be to be signed or to be approved. Uh, you can see the, the information here. There's a quorum, zero out of five so far signed. All right, so I'll approve. You can see that the approval was sent to uh, the TSB uh, and there's been no communication with the HSM uh, so far because the TSB is so far only collecting uh, the approvals. So at this point, we have already one out of five signed. You can see that then this other client has already signed. So I'm going to sign here too. Again, the TSB simply, oh, I'm sorry, it seems like sort of a bug. Oh, okay. Um, and the TSB uh, has collected the second approval. Um, and at this point uh, in the business application, you can see TSB collected all the approvals um, and, uh, and sent uh, the, um, the approvals to the HSM and retrieved the result. I forgot to show you. Uh, um, all right, so this is how the approved status uh, looks like. Uh, status is executed. Um, approved by two keys, uh, no more approval spending, and here's the result, the signature. What I forgot to show you is the intermediary status. Um, so let me just create uh, one more uh, request. Um, by the way, here you can see the, the request diagram. As you can see, um, the, the, the TSB reaches to the HSM even with the first request because there's a 10 minute time, low, uh, time uh, out sorry, in these requests. Um, so it needs uh, a timestamp and a signature. Um, but what I wanted to show you is this. Uh, I'm gonna approve just with one. Um, and now you can see we're, we have one out of five here and if I uh, fetch the status, I'll get pending. I'll see that it's been approved by one key, but there are still uh, one out of four keys uh, that are that, that, that needs to sign. So, so one of these four is still uh, pending signature or approval. All right, and now I'm gonna quickly show uh, one minute time lock. Uh, Bitcoins. All right, I'll wait for the tasks to show up here. Here it is. Uh, you can see 50 second time lock counting down. 40 seconds to go. All right, so I'll approve both. So at this point, the request you can see is pending time lock. Uh, that is because two clients have approved uh, of it. 
Um, so the, the TSB has collected the approvals, but it knows that um, you know, the time log needs to, needs to expire. So we're, it is now pending uh, time log. I'm gonna close this and I'll show you the status. Um, uh, so it's approved, but it's not executed. It's approved by these two keys. There's no more pending uh, approval necessary, um, but there's no result. Uh, so now I need uh, the time log to expire. A couple more seconds. And now the TSB reached out and uh, executed uh, the request. So if I show the result now, uh, you can see executed and the result is here. All right. Thanks everyone for, for watching this uh, and I'm gonna look forward to the questions.